Hi, everyone. I'm Lori Lewis, and I have a special guest today with me, Mr. Kevin Conan Bankins. And uh, may I call you Mr. Conan? That sounds great to me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been called I worse, so that's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm going to give people a little bit of your bio sure. and what we're going to discuss today really, uh, to me, all has to do with a healthy lifestyle, you yeah. know, and martial arts is our world and our metaphor for that, really. But this can apply to anything that you do in life and improving yourself and, and having a healthier life. So I want to tell you about Mr. Conan here. And of course, I'll put all this in the link below. But you were born in Lake Charles, Louisiana. So that's where we get that wonderful accent. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I grew up and, in a little town called Westlake. <laughs> oh, oh. And then uh, Mr. Conan is an American actor, model, martial artist, and cowboy. Okay. Now, are you a bona fide cowboy? Are you out there riding horses and doing the whole thing? Yeah, I came uh, when I was a kid. Uh, we were, I rodeoed all through my childhood. I, wow. I rodeoed till I, rodeo I was about 27. And, um, and, but I was, I, was wow. raised, I was raised on a ranch in Louisiana, a little ranch in Louisiana. And that's all we knew. You know, we were just cowboys. We did, we were cowboys before it was cool. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody else is wearing, <laughs> where it's wearing parachute pants and at high school. I had a cowboy hat on. <laughs> so, well, okay. So as an actor, of course, he is best known now for his starring role in Cop versus Killer, which is on Amazon Prime, is it available elsewhere or just on? Yeah, Prime? it's on. Two, it's on Amazon Prime and Tubi and a couple others, from what I understand. Yeah, so okay. we're excited about that. Oh yeah, so people, if you like, uh, what, what would we call this? It's action. Yeah, and it's <laughs> action humor. It's uh, dark humor. Uh, action, dark humor. It's got a little. Cop versus Killer has a little bit of everything. Uh, and it, matter of fact, the funny thing was, I didn't even really realize what the movie was about till I watched it. Even though I, I was, you know, we shot so many scenes, and I, I didn't until the, I didn't know how it ended. And that's that's what I love <laughs> about movie making is, unless you're one of the producers, you don't know what's coming out at the end of this show, you know. So it was it was really really cool the way it laid out. On this. So I, I'm excited well, to get part of that. I watched it like this. <laughs> Yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's funny because it's, uh, it's a really gory slash humor. It's just, like I said, it's got a little bit of everything. So everybody go check it out. <laughs> yeah, it's it. If you like that kind of action uh, slash, I'm going to say horror even, yeah, right? You'll, yeah. you'll love this movie. But yeah, let's talk yeah. about how you got Thank there you. because you have been a martial artist for most of your life. In fact, you were a competitor starting all the way back in 1984 to what, about 2017? 84, and, uh, I, yeah, 84, uh, Houston, <laughs> Texas. Um, I did oh. my, the funny thing about 84, I always tell people about this, that, that particular, it was a huge, uh, huge tournament, karate tournament. Um, and I was 14 years old. Oh, and wow. That particular day, my sensei got very sick. He couldn't go. And so I'm 14 years old, me and my dad. And my dad had no idea about martial arts, but he brought me to Houston. And I'm on the floor by myself. Wow. And going, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> and so, but it, it turned out, it turned out well. But the, I did my last competition, uh, karate, uh, uh, full contact karate tournament in 2017. I was 48. Uh, wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, well, yeah. okay. So you you have competed in full contact karate, like you said, jujitsu, boxing, judo, MMA. Uh, yeah. you've, you've done a bit of it all. So I've tried it all. <laughs> yeah. I've tried it all. <laughs> um, also, I read that you hold a six degree black belt in Shotokan karate. In Shotokan, yes. Yeah. And a black belt in Royce Gracie's jiu jitsu. Yeah. I know that that impresses people. <laughs> you know, I, and, uh, I, yeah, keep going, keep going. No, no, okay. Well, let me just finish this, yeah, and then we'll, then talk, we'll yeah. touch on that. A brown belt in judo, and are you currently a blue belt in Kempo 5.0? I'm a blue belt, going for my green belt shortly, and um, awesome. in, in Kempo. I've been enjoying the Kempo journey. It's my going into my fifth year now doing it, and um, you know, I 
you know, I tell people, a lot of people will ask me about martial arts and things. And one of the things about, I, I tell people, learn everything you can, you know, learn everything you can, you know, because that's what martial arts is about. It's about, it's about growing. It's about, our, you know, it's not about, you know, a lot of times we, you know, people will call me master bankins or something like that. But, you know, I don't think the journey ever is. I, I think you wow. can live 10 lifetimes and not, and never understand all of this. It's just so, it's just that vast, you know. And then, I, and this is a short bio of Mr. Conan, um, you also own a school in Los Alamos, New Mexico, which is a gorgeous area. Um, tell us about your school. Yeah, Bankins Martial Arts in Los Alamos, and uh, we teach um, jiu-jitsu, kickboxing. We have a great fitness class. And we just, you know, years, years ago, I ran, I ran a fight school. I ran a fight school for years. I ran an MMA fight school for years. And as I started getting a little bit older, um, and I, I wanted to go back to family martial arts. That's what I really wanted. That was my goal. I want to, I want to go back. So we, we really did away, uh, years ago after I stopped fighting, I kind of lost the desire to, to be a part of, of the, the MMA world anymore. And um, and so we went back to family martial arts and we just have a really, you know, one of the things that about our school is people come in and I kind of call it the over 40 school ah. because we kind of run <laughs> it in a way where, you know, people that are older can come in and not be torn apart to the point to where they can't go to work tomorrow. So our motto, even on our door, is everybody has to go to work tomorrow. And so I want my people to train safe. I want you to learn martial arts. However, it's just a different vision for me as I've gotten a little bit older. And I want to make sure that there's a school that anybody can train. In, you know? Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's cool. That's, that's yeah. the part about our school. That's so cool. You know, is that anybody could come and train and, you know, I can't, I never tell anybody you're not going to get hurt, but we try our best not to let anybody get too bad and banged up, you know? <laughs> so. Hey, you know, they say people get hurt the most in their own homes, like falling off ladders or downstairs yeah. or, so there's always a chance we're going to get hurt whenever always we that do chance. right? Always yeah. That <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I, I enjoy watching your adventures on your Facebook page and oh, you're always, yeah. you do, you do sometimes I would say kind of extreme elite things. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you're you're always <laughs> you're always pushing yourself. Like I I bought a scene when you had your wife bury you in the snow. Yeah. Um, oh my yeah. god, that was an experience. <laughs> you know the weird thing about it, I, I bet you know I do ice baths and things like this, and I had this thing. I said because somebody was talking about one day about being buried in an avalanche. Wow. And this guy was I would listen to this guy's interview, and and he was talking about. Uh, the snow had gotten down inside his jacket and the severe pain, you know, that he went through in about a minute and a half, two minutes. Mm. And I'm thinking, Oh, come on, you know? And so I had her bury me in that snow and the, <laughs> I wanted to see what does this really feel like for two minutes being buried in snow, you know? Wow. And the weirdest thing in the world was what a lot of, after I got up and I was kind of like, Hey, what a lot of people don't know was, I felt my, when I walked back in the house, I felt my heart rate drop and I almost passed out. I had to grab myself. I was like, oh my God, what it actually does to your body and your mind, how, once you come out of that, how fast uh, it sh throws you into shock. Wow. So that was a true experience. I need to repost that and say something about it, but <laughs> that was a real experience. And I was like, oh, I would have never thought being buried in snow for just two minutes up to your neck the effects that it has on your body, you know? Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I grew up in Chicago. So just thinking about that snow. It's like, <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo. Um, yeah. Cause we'd have 80 below wind chill factors and that's, that's where like your ear will freeze and fall off. You know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. You get so really like, cold here, but I don't want to, I don't want to go quite that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's a good jumping off point to talking about the purpose of us doing these videos. And I'm going to have you on as well as other coaches frequently and talk about the fact that, you know, I'm kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum of you. I would, I consider you an elite athlete and it's been your career and, and, and your life. And I am a casual athlete. I'm 63 years old. And you know, I'm not one of those people who like in the last 20 years, I've run marathons or anything like that. You know, I've done 
maybe a little more exercise than some. I've uh, done a lot of hiking and kayaking and that kind of thing. And I've dabbled in the martial arts. Well, recently, um, I, well, first of all, I have the opportunity to be in Las Vegas right. uh, with mi Mr. Jeff Speakman's yeah, uh, right, world, yeah. world Training Center, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, the command center. Right, there, there he yeah. is, yeah, <laughs> the command center, yeah. And I, I had met this lady, which we both know, um, Mrs. Kathy Little, who sure. we just, she's fantastic, and we just lost her yeah. to cancer yeah. just to, right before Thanksgiving. And she was, I think, maybe a seventh degree black belt just in Kempo. She's yes. extraordinary. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I was I was so shocked um when I got that call a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Um because I was so impressed. I've always been so impressed with her, but yeah. I was really so impressed um when I was uh, we were all in Vegas this year and uh, you were there too and to watch yes. her compete like she did this year. And then somebody called me and said she passed away. I was like, I, I, I couldn't wrap my head around. Like, I just saw her yeah. compete like nobody's business. And, you know, and so sad. Just just such a such a great loss to the Kempo family and just the martial arts community uh, as a whole. In general, yeah. It really was. And, and she was, my husband and I are realtors, so she helped us get our house in Las Vegas. And I yeah. was hanging out with her and just, what just a wonderful person she was. And so, yeah, it was very impacting on me. And I just woke up one morning and said, you know what? I, I've been dabbling in martial arts. I still haven't gotten my purple belt. I've got to test in this next couple of weeks. Yeah. And um, I want to see what I can do in her honor yeah. To, yeah. to get as close as I can to black belt, if not become a black belt. And I know, sure. Mr. Conan, that this is going to be extra you know, hard at my age. I mean, it's just the reality. So I want to talk to you about what what does it take to become a black belt? Consistency. You know, wow. I tell people a lot of people. You know, I I I, I you know I, I get calls from people and all over the world daily. Really, I get either emails or calls or you know talk to people. And one of the things that one of the things that I get a lot of a lot of times. And that I visualize in pe when people are trying to learn martial arts, or, is a lot of times we we want it we want it today. I want it right now. I want to get through with this. So this is, but you have to see it as a journey, and and you really do. You have to see it as a as a long journey. You know, I, I tell I tell people all the time, um, don't worry about the belt. Don't worry about the belt. Please don't worry. If you if your focus goes to the belt, you'll never. Make you know, it has to be something you love to do, has to be something that you're willing to do, and it has to be something that uh, that you put into your lifestyle, you know, it, it, because it is a lifestyle. You know, uh, if it's just motivation, we'll lose that. Hmm. You know, we will lose. It has to be discipline. We have to discipline. You know, how many times do you, you know, even even as an instructor, um, there are there really are times that. Um, I just don't feel like doing it today. Mm. You know, I don't feel like lifting weights today. I don't feel like doing katas today. I don't feel like rolling today. I don't feel like doing any of this today. But once once you put it into your routine and once you put it into your lifestyle, it's just something that we do every day, you know. And 90% of the time, you're great with it. But you're going to have that 10% of the time that you're going to have to gruel and push and say, I know today... It's not the best day, but sometimes you'll find those days are where you actually grow in your in your journey. You know, for me, it seems like it's tapping back into that. Uh, I was a little tomboy, you know, hmm. when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, and and I, up until I was about 15 years old, I thought I was going to play third base for the Chicago Cubs. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so three big dreams, you know, but I, I went on it in my other love and in music instead in radio yeah. and saying yeah. opera and all these things well okay i'm looking at this now it's a chance to reconnect with that love of sports because there's something about martial arts that i mean it just feels like baseball even for me you know some of the movements and sure. and the more i do it the more i love it right yeah it, it really does become a part of your it's strange how it becomes your part of your personality almost mm. 
because every conversation you have is somewhere in that realm of talk, you know, and you start to see where, you, you know, you could talk to people for a couple of minutes and just find out where their life is for real. And the moment wow. I talk to real martial artists, I know who they are, you know, mm -hmm. and you can see that you can hear it in them. You can see it. Them, you can see how they stand, how they move, how they operate. Um, and you could just see that martial artist in a lot of people. You know, I always tell, you know, when I, when I speak uh, and, and when you start to get into those high levels, um, you know, when I speak about Benny or Kidez a lot of times and, and I consider, um, uh, should say Benny, yeah, right there behind you. <laughs> right and uh, once I once I see um, once when I hear him talk, I get smarter. I say this a lot, you know, when I when I talk to guys like Jeff Speakman and I talk to guys like Benny or Kidez and these, you know, Dan and Asanto and these types of guys, Todd Nathanson, uh, Hoist Gracie, um, I just sometimes just sit back and just soak it up because there's going to be something they say in there that's going to help my journey along the way. You right. know? And that's the thing about it is, you know, as years go on through martial arts, you should be wiser than when you began. There's something about the journey that should lighten your life. And, and, and there should be something in your life as a martial artist that other people see and go, there's something about that person that I don't see in other people. Wow. You know? Ooh, so many things are going through my head. One, I love when Mr. Speakman says that we're doing martial art, not martial fighting. Correct. Because our world now is so, you know, really, really into MMA and UFC and all those sure. things. But this is, we're talking about a really different thing here. It is a whole lifestyle. Tell me what more what that means to you, because yeah. a lot of people love doing yoga and they, but it's, it's to me, it's even deeper than that. It's, yeah. it's so much more involved in the martial art life. Yeah. You know, I've been doing martial arts uh, 47 years this year. Wow. And one of the things, you know, um, as as I've gotten as a, about every five to 10 years, the journey is different for me. You know, hmm. when I first started, I just wanted to kick and punch something. I was a kid. I just wanted <laughs> my friends were chopping everything in, in the neighborhood. And I'm like, I want to be I want to be chopping something, you know. And, <laughs> and so, yeah. And so that's how it kind of, kind of started was, you know, the Bruce Lee movies in the 70s and all the Chuck Norris was coming out and and all these things. And um, all the kids just wanted to be Bruce Lee at that point or Chuck Norris, you know. And but as it's evolved every about, like I said, about every 10 years, there's a growth period. And there's, it means something differently to me. Had you asked me 10 years ago what I thought about Kata's, I would have had a totally different answer for you than I would today, uh -huh. for instance. You know, um, as as a young man, I saw almost no benefit from, from them at all. Like, I don't, I, I think they're useless. And now as an older man, they're part of my warm-ups. Mm. They warm up my body and, and help me to move without hurting myself. And so, like I said, every 10 years, you're going to get a different visual because of the can and can't you can and can't do anymore, you know? Wow. And yeah. so you'll start to see the benefits of so many things you've done for years. However, they kind of like a rose, they kind of open as you get older, you know, mm. you start to see wow. those benefits, you know? Yeah. Um, when I interviewed uh, Sensei Benny, the jet, yeah, I, yeah. he, I asked him right away, can you still do those spinning back kicks? And he goes, am I breathing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's yeah. in his 70s and yes. he and his wife are still jogging and he's, yeah, yeah. he can do that. Yeah, you know, you know uh, I'll tell you a funny story real quick. Um, when I was a kid, I, 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 I would buy Black Melt Magazine with my allowance. Uh -huh. You know, oh. and we had we had we had a Kroger store. And when I say I came, I came up in a little bitty town, I came up in a little bitty town. And so, uh -huh. but right over the bridge was a big city. And so, my mom would drive me with my allowance, and I would get the Black Belt oh. magazine from Kroger's. And so, at that time, Benny Arquidez was the man in martial arts. I mean, he was the guy. And so, every time I would get my magazine, I would cut out pictures. And put them on my wall. And my mom finally came into my room one day. She goes, you can't put any more pictures of, of this guy on your <laughs> wall. There's no one else to put them. And so in 2010, <laughs> I got a call from Jeff Speakman. 
and uh, say, asking me, would you want to come teach at our camp again, and, which is always such a great honor for me. And absolutely. And he said, well, this year, this year we're going to do co-teaching. I had never met Benny Ortiz. He was just, I was just a huge fan. And so I didn't even know that he was coming that year. And I got to the camp and I got my itinerary. And on the first top page, it said, Kevin Conan Bankins, Benny Urquidez. Coach. Wow. <laughs> and I called my mom and I said, hey, you remember that guy that was on my wall all those years? I get to co-teach with him this year. And we did that for two years in a row. And it was just such a great honor. So oh. yeah, to be, to be uh, not, not only in the same room, but teaching. You know what I found so amazing about Benny Urquidez was we kind of worked out this thing where, okay, you teach kickboxing. Uh, since say you'll teach kickboxing for the first hour and then I'll come in behind you and teach jujitsu like okay now we got it to the ground you know he stayed for every one of my classes <laughs> and I the first I, 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 I'm, I'm starting my class off and because ideally most people are like you'll teach an hour and then I come in you go take a break and I'll teach for an hour you come back and teach and we did that all day and so but he stayed for every one of my classes and I was I was like Looking at him going, oh, my God, Penny Rodriguez is in my class. What a great honor. Like, oh, my God, he is here. <laughs> well, all of these folks are really great inspiration for me um, yeah. to say that I can do this in my 60s. Now, of course, you know, like Sensei Benny's been doing this all of his life. But it makes me think, I mean, we can get our bodies to do more than what we think we can. Don't you agree? Our, our our bodies are machines. We are machines. As if you look at it that way, and a lot of people will, you know, one of the things I I get probably more than anything is is people will come in. You know, first thing they tell me is their age. Of course, you know, I'm 40 or I'm 50 or I'm, you know, and I don't want to get hurt. Myself. I just don't want to get hurt. Well, what people don't understand is you're gonna get hurt if you don't keep your body up, and that's the real key. You know, if you don't change the oil in your in your vehicle, it's going to eventually crash. And this is the same thing with our diet, our exercise, our rest is a big part of that. So so many parts come into this. Um, our attitude, everything uh, is a very big part of our daily our daily lives. And once you get that discipline and you understand that and you can balance those things, your life will change. I tell people all the time, you give me six months, I'll change your life. <laughs> And, you know, the truth is that you could probably get hurt doing other sports before you would in martial arts because we learn a lot about like how to control what we're doing and being aware of everything, right? Sure. You know, and that's another thing is, you know, you may go play baseball or you may go play football or whatever. Pickleball. <laughs> Tickle, whatever, yeah. And <laughs> half the time people don't warm them up. They're running bases, these things. Martial arts, we warm up. We have a great way of doing these routines. You know, it keeps us flexible, uh, keeps the right muscles in action all the time. You know, keeps our mind focused, make, keeps us sharp, keeps us aware. And these are things makes it help, helps, just helps our life to flow, you know. Well, we have so much to talk about. And I'm, you know, I've invited you to help me along this journey now. This is an advantage I have because of media. I, you know, I get to connect with all these different people. And, and of course, thanks to Mr. Speakman, sure. I've met all of you folks. You know, he right. brings all these people into this camp that he does every July, which yeah. I think will be the 29th this coming July. I think but, it is. Um, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that yeah, wild? Beautiful... But so we meet people from all over the world. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's an honor to have you to help me through Thank my you. journey. And I think a lot of it, Mr. Conan, is our belief and our, our mental, because before I didn't believe I could do it, now I'm starting to embrace that I can. Yeah. It's like you know, a mindset change. It, it huh? really, it, it really, you know, you think about this, you think about this, the average human being, especially the average Westerner, we, we, we're really lazy people. We, we really are uh, 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 lazy in the West. Um, really, the whole world's almost lazy now. But as a whole, we are really lazy. And if it doesn't make us feel good, if it doesn't taste good, I don't want to eat. You know, I ask people all the time. They don't even know what I'm doing. I'll say, if I put an apple in front of you, or I put a piece of apple pie in front of you, which one do you think you would probably eat? 
Well, my, majority, I'd eat the apple pie. Of course you would, because it tastes better. That's the only reason you're gonna eat it. It's not better for you, it just tastes better. So everything that surrounds us, surrounds our mind, has to do with dopamine. And I get those dopamine hits, whether it's my eating or my entertainment or whatever it is. And so if I'm not hitting those dopamine, if I'm not hitting that dopamine just right, I don't want to do it. And sometimes you, people get real excited. You know, the, the first three months people come into an academy, a, a dojo, they're so excited. And you see this thing going up. It's going up. And all of a sudden <laughs> you see down. Wow. Why? The dopamine hit is over. Mm. the dopamine hits over and there's no discipline to back that up. So what happens? They leave the academy. It's not fun anymore. If it was fun the first three months, now it's actually starting to become work. I got to, I got to work a little bit. I got to do push-ups. I got to do some sit-ups. <laughs> you know? So ideally I, that's why I always tell people when they come in, let's start getting your life disciplined so that you can understand once that dopamine hit leaves, you're going to want to stay because we've instilled the right mindset to you. Wow. Yeah, this is good stuff. So I'm looking at it now, like, and, and I, I was going to do little short reels with you, but this is so good. Is great, Seriously. Yeah. I think this is what people, um, I think will want to hear, you know, and need That's to true. hear. So I'm trying to make some small changes now. Like for instance, I think it's the same kind of dopamine that you're talking about. I love playing video games. I play all these like tower self-defense or not self-defense, but tower defense games and yeah. time management, all this stuff. Right. Yeah. And they have a way of just keeping you hooked in, you know, sure. keeping sure. you hooked in. And so I'm like, okay, what if I spent, five minutes less doing that and five minutes more of martial arts that I really want to do, you know, just maybe some small incremental things. Yeah. What do you think you know, of that? Yeah. I, I think it's big. You know, you know, one thing I, I, you know, I play the guitar and one of the things I tell people when they're starting the guitar is don't do over five minutes a day. Ooh. And they're like, Oh, I'll be playing as my, my fat can't hardly touch my fingers. They hurt so bad. I know. <laughs> play, start off five minutes a day because why? the dopamine hit's going to be there with five to 10 minutes a day. You play 40 minutes a day, that's going to last you a couple of weeks. And if you're really not into it, it's going to leave you very quickly. This is why people pick, pick things up and they put them down so fast, huh. you know, because wow. again, that dopamine hit. So what happens is we start, you, I, I tell people all the time, start understanding your just simple cards, simple things and play with those a little bit, put them down, come back to it. You know, my dopamine, speaking of Kempo, my dopamine, uh, my dopamine <laughs> went out at Blue Belt, <laughs> Purple Belt. That wow. Purple Belt caught it like to kill me. You could probably say the same <laughs> thing here. And I told, I told Mr. Potter, uh, you know, Mr. Potter, and I, I told Mr. Potter, my instructor, I said, man, I could see where you're, lo where, where people quit Kempo at. Every art has somewhere that they go, wow, that was not fun like the rest of. You know, and so every 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 mark I watch students and every mark you'll go, this is the hard mark right here. This is that hard mark where the students are gonna go, I don't know if I really want to do this. You wow. know, and we have to figure out ways to keep them engaged and make them understand that they are stronger than they think they are. And I think also, you know, find an art that you love or yeah. find some kind of exercise that you really love, you relate to. I love that Kempo stuff. I'm not, it's not easy. Yeah, it's, but... not, it's not very difficult. Yes. <laughs> one of the, more, one um, of the more difficult arts I've ever done. Yes. Wow. Well, yeah. it's, but I love the history too. Even yeah. the formal bow that we do, you know, has a story to it. And I yeah. see, I, I really latch on to that kind of thing. I love the, the history and, and the meaning. I love symbolism. In fact, I'm wearing several things this morning. I, I got my little purple belt bracelet. There you go. Um, hey, there you yeah. go. <laughs> and I had a necklace, uh, a necklace that I bought in honor of uh, Kathy Little, and it's yeah. got a little little black belt stone on it, and a belt, yeah, yeah. and uh, an encouraging thing. To me, all that symbolism is really important. You know, it really. You know, the, the one thing I, 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 forty-seven years into martial arts, um, and being through so many different systems uh, over the years, um, and I've dabbed in a lot more, you know, dabbed in for several years, dabbed in Krav Maga, several different things. Um, 
the one thing I tell people all the time is, is I, I get all the time people say, what martial arts should I do? Mm. And I'm very, I'm very honest with people. You know, I say, well, you know, and of course, you know, I always push jujitsu. I think jujitsu is a, is a great art for anybody to learn, you know, um, because it, it's so applicable and you can apply it so easily, you know, however, you know, not every martial arts for everybody. It's just, it's real. Yeah. I've learned it's not every martial. Some people I get, I could take two, five. I, t I say this all, I tell this story all the time. I could take two five-year-old kids, never had a lesson in their life. And I can tell you immediately when they start moving around together, which one's a grappler, which one's a striker. Oh, interesting. <laughs> it's so funny. Two, you, you put a couple kids together, watch how one will start grabbing on the other one and moving them around. And the other one's trying to punch and move around. And they've never had a lesson in their life. Wow. And so it's funny, a lot of times, depending on people's personalities, I mean, there's so much that goes into martial arts besides I just want to learn some martial arts. You know, I could take per people's personalities and go, I think you're going to do better at kickboxing. You know, wow. oh, okay, and sure enough, we'll get them in that class. And they do great, you know, and then depending on people's claustrophobia, everything plays a big role in uh, what art you really uh, want to learn. You know, I had a I had a person that was coming from a different school and they were learning a Taekwondo art um, from this particular school. And she was coming in and she was actually a black belt in Taekwondo. And she was just saying, mm. you know, I I just over the years, I've kind of lost my love for it, you know, and she started mm. Jiu-Jitsu and it was a new thing. And she's like, this is a great new thing for me. You know, got the Taekwondo in my belt. Now I'm going to move this direction. So again, you know, sometimes, sometimes you might do something for years too, and then kind of feel the need for a change, you know, so you can do so many different ways, go so many different ways with this and so many different directions, you know. And then of course, like uh, in 5.0, Kempo 5.0, Mr. Speakman is combining uh, some art now where that's why we have you coming into the camp, you know. Yeah, I met, in some I, jiu yeah. Yeah, I met Mr. Speakman in 2005 mm. and uh, we started talking about uh, we started talking about uh, groundwork in the Kempo system because they it, they were very far into it at the time. And at that time, I don't even think that Mr. Speakman had really talked to any grapplers um, mm. at that time. And we uh, we started talking and emailing back and forth and um, we were putting some of the uh, the things together and he would email me techniques and I'd say yes <laughs> and no and I, mean, I still I still have the original Kempo 5.0 um, techniques that he sent wow. me years ago and I actually have them printed and just to for just uh, just because and so I just uh, have them there it's been it's been really fun to watch the Kempo 5.0 evolve over the years yeah you know, evolve over the years and uh, and just to be a small part of that was really cool you know yeah yeah and it, you know I'm, I'm just trying to absorb everything i can he teaches at his world training center on tuesday nights and you know i'm far from being able to be in that class but yeah. i am absorbing things just watching and listening to him you know yeah, yeah. and I mean, you, you know one of the things about what people have done this for years you get the good thing is you get their experiences and mm. a lot of times you don't make the same mistakes they made because of those mistakes. I tell people all the time when I'm teaching certain techniques, don't do it this way because you're going to get hurt because I do. <laughs> and so yeah. a lot of times we get all that, we get all, all that pain and, 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 and experience uh, that people had to go through over the years. And we don't make those same mistakes because they already did. And they taught us different, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have so much knowledge to share with people through all of your experiences. And I'm looking forward to just kind of picking your brain as we go along. Yeah. And, and I, I want to, in the next ones, talk more about health and the things that you do. Um, yeah. But let's let's just maybe at least touch on one of those points. Now, of course, everyone right now, you know, January is the oh, gee, yeah. time that people want to make changes. I've heard there's an actual date, though, in just maybe a month or so that they show what most people quit <laughs> gyms that they are signed up for. So yeah. maybe what are some, what are some in your um, estimation, some small things that we could do? You don't have to go do a gym membership, do you? No, not, I, I, mean, I, I do 90% of my workouts at home. Hmm. 
You know, I during COVID, I bought all my own weights. All the gyms were closed. If you didn't have it, if you had a gym open, you had a mask up. So I just got online, bought all my own weights and my own benches and everything. And matter of fact, my wife calls our living room the gym now because all the <laughs> weights are in the living room. And she's like, well, I'm going to go to our living room slash gym now. And, uh, you know, but uh, but no, you can do some great routines. You know, the, the thing about it now, too, versus when we were coming up, you know, years ago, you had to buy a book. You had to go get some training. Man, with online stuff now, I mean, if, if you don't know how to work out, um, it's not hard. There's so, so much information now. And I just tell people call me and I say, you know, just get on YouTube and just type in how to do push-ups, type in how to do sit-ups, type in uh, daily workouts and just watch all the stuff that comes up, you know, so you can do so much just by moving at your own home. And and by the way, I was able to start uh, Kempo 5.0 while I was in Hawaii right. because Ms. Mr. Speakman has Mrs. Jenny Kuiper doing the yes. online academy. Yeah. So that's something that people can look into. And, and a lot of people are, are putting up things. Now, I don't know if you can just watch some random videos and become a martial artist, but this, this is a pretty intensive program and we get to do a lot of things in person too, you know? So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. One of the things about martial arts, I really do believe, I, 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 there's no doubt you can learn, you can learn the movements and motions of martial arts to a degree by yourself, to a degree. Mm. You know, um, however, you need a hands on teacher eventually, which you've done, you know, but you the cool thing was you did it for how many, how long online before? Yeah. Oh, well, before I dabbled in the American Kempo for seven years, which I didn't advance in belts, but I did learn a bit. Um, I learned how to move and all those things. Yeah. But I've been doing uh, the online academy for the last year. Yeah. Yeah. So, so now I get you, to supplement it with going to yeah, the World Training You Center. know, the cool thing about doing the online <laughs> academy, I'm sure, yeah, once, you, once, <laughs> you know, once you did start to get that hands-on experience, I'm sure that all, all the work you did online would start to pay off at that point, you know, because you already had the basic move, movements and motions. And then once, so I, I think Ms., Mrs. Kuiper is doing a great job with that. I think there's a lot of people benefiting from so yeah keep, going her, keep it up keep yes it up. and and she's become just a great friend in my life too so yeah. that's another wonderful thing about the martial arts um mr conan i don't know if you're familiar with the blue zones have you heard about that no. um well there's a gentleman who years ago i've been following this for years but it's getting more po popular now um, he worked with national geographics i believe and he went around to these different cultures and he identified the healthiest seven healthiest cultures and oldest living populations in the world and of course one was okinawa you know yeah. go figure right and the lot and and identified all these things the number one thing seemed to be about having community yeah you know and having that social and that support in your life and i think martial arts gives that to you yeah there's you know i was telling somebody just a couple of weeks ago i was talking to a friend of mine and i said you know there's almost nowhere in this world that I could go and not have a place to lay my head. Wow. I, I just know that many people around the world and it's from martial, most of it's from martial arts, you know, uh, Japan, Brazil, China, you know, uh, you, the oh. UK. I mean, you just, you name it. We have friends all over. It's a huge community. You know, it's a huge community. One of the things I find funny, um, um, is that, you know, a lot of the people that, like, for instance, that I communicate with are multi, they, they, they do multiple martial arts, hmm. you know, and the thing about it is, like, I do Kempo, I do Shotokan, Judo, Jiu Jitsu, you know, <laughs> and I have friends from all these arts, you know, all over the world, thousands and thousands of people, thousands of phone numbers, you know, and it's just really, really cool. The community. <laughs> That we get through martial arts it like you yeah said, it's huge okay well boy this has turned into just like my kind of dream podcast this is the kind of <laughs> thing i'm wanting to, <laughs> wanting to listen to so i i really appreciate it and and we're going to do more again really soon because there's so much like i said i want to ask you yeah. um and by the way i really enjoyed meeting your wife last july but i loved her when yeah, i saw amazing. her taking a shovel and burying you in the snow <laughs> well you know you know the funny thing was the funny thing was 
when I asked her to do it, I thought she might say, oh, you know, I don't know. Or she's like, absolutely. She starts shoveling, moving, <laughs> taking it away to hell. And I'm like, hey, you're a little too into this. And if you watch, I'm going to post that again. If you watch it, she threw the first shovel right here. Poof. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, couldn't you throw it on my feet or something? She throws it right in my face. Like, oh, my God. Oh. So that was, a, that was an immediate shocker. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, so you're you're starting to really go for the acting uh, jobs as well, and so yeah. I'm excited to see what comes up for you with that. Yeah, you know we're doing. Um, you know it's funny. I'm I'm talking to Kevin Bacon, the actor. You know, right now we've been going back and sorry, we've been going back and forth online and all that stuff. Wow. And, and uh, I was telling him this story, and I'll just share it here if that's okay, real quick. But of course, my entire life since Footloose has came out, right? A lot of people ask me, why do you use Kevin Conan Bankins and not just Kevin Bankins, right? Anytime I call somewhere and I'll say, they'll say, I'm sorry, what was your name? I'll say, Kevin Bankins. The actor? <laughs> and I'll go, well, it's like the actor, but it's spelled this way. This is, I mean, this is, and so just a few weeks ago, I was at the dog park with my dog and this lady goes, oh, hi, I'm so-and-so. And I said, I'm Kevin Bankins. Like the actor? And so <laughs> this is funny. So my entire life, I'll correct people. Or I'll say, no, it's spelled this way. But it was so funny. At the dog park a couple of weeks ago, the, I tell the lady, she says, I'm sorry, what's your name? And I said, oh, I'm Kevin Banking. And she said, like the actor? And I went, yeah, like the actor. <laughs> <laughs> and I shared this with Kevin Bacon, and he thought it was the funniest story. So, <laughs> so my entire life, now I can actually say, yeah, like the actor. You know, so, <laughs> but I, I started using the name Kevin Conan Bankins, which is my rich name. And but I started using it because keep, people can decipher on the phone who they're speaking to because it never fails every time. Oh, yeah. Is this the actor? Is this like the actor's name? And so I, now I just say, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah thank you, thank you. that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so awesome. Yeah, well, so. So I, I want to wish people uh, great health for this year, yes. you know, and uh, and just do small things like Mr. Conan said, five minutes a day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some do something new, yeah, something that you'll just really attach yourself to, huh? Yeah, you know, I'm working with somebody. I started actually working with somebody yesterday, and mm. the only thing I put this person to do was I said I want you to do five push-ups a day. And she has stairs. And I said, I want you to walk your stairs four times. And it was so funny. She called me last night. She goes, I am so tired. And I said, why? She said, I did the push-ups. I did the walking. I'm exhausted. And this, huh. but the sad thing is sometimes we don't know the real shape we're in. We actually start trying to do something a little bit. We go, wow, I'm in pretty poor health. You know, and hmm. a lot of people really are. And so you put people in these just some small workouts and watch their life slowly start to change. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I thank you, sir. Thank you so much for Thanks all for this time me. to spend with here. us. Yes. Yay. Okay. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to everybody. I look forward thank to you. our next talk, Miss Lori. Great job yes, you're doing here. Love you. Love your show.